fell in love with music at the age of 10 after I'd been playing the violin for seven years and I finally heard a recording of myself playing and I thought, that does not sound absolutely terrible. And it took me seven years to get there, but as a 10 year old it was exciting for me to hear that and go, you know what, I think I've got something with this, I'm gonna stick with it. Um, the first song I learned was the was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the violin. I was three and a half years old and it took me probably six months to learn. Yes, I have six siblings and we all play music. It was a rule in my house that if we wanted to be a part of the family we had to take music lessons till we were 16. I would probably say, um, have to go with, there are a few bands, I mean, um, Imagine Dragons, they had a couple of my first um, uh, favorite songs that I decided to arrange for the violin and lute pedal. Um, and then um, groups like uh, um, Two Cellos um, have been awesome, um, Pentatonix is another one. Um, so just people that have really um, stepped outside the bounds of um, what music was supposed to be and made it their own. Um, yeah, I would say the two things, I've, I've taught over a hundred students and the, the main um, problems I see is people that don't have enough patience to drill uh, difficult passages or learning difficult concepts and just do it over and over and over again. It takes a lot of patience um, and too many times we just want to rush to the end result and start playing our music at the performance tempo when we haven't learned how to actually do it yet. So doing that, um, we call it wood shop or, or wood, is it wood? No, it's, it's wood shedding where um, you basically just hole up and you practice a certain, you know, even if it's just one measure or one little passage over and over and over again and not moving on until it's perfect. That's one of the, I would say one thing that's difficult for people to do. Um, and then the other one is really just trying to make sure once that's done to get outside of the technique and to express some type of emotion or impression or feeling or um, color or something as you're playing so that communicates to the listener. Um, I started doing that about four years ago and um, because I come from a classical music background I had no idea, I, had, I, I didn't know um, the type of gear that was available to musicians and mostly it's it's catered to um, guitarists but I was able to I actually saw um, a YouTube video of a violinist using a loop pedal and just was really excited with the possibilities um, that it afforded me so I decided I, I went to Guitar Center and I picked one up uh, myself and taught myself how to use it and um, made my first YouTube video about six months later It's probably, it probably just because of my classical background, it'd probably have to be um, Beethoven. Um, just, I, I or, or Mozart, I mean, one of those two, it'd be so, I, don't, I, don't, I just can't comprehend how they were able to do, write what they were able to write. Um, and so it'd be fun just to talk with them and sit with them and, and write music with them. So I started taking music lessons when I was three years old, um, and by the time I was 11, I was taking with a professor at um, Brigham Young University, and I was practicing three to four hours a day, six days a week. Um, after which I went and got a bachelor's at, at BYU in music performance. I got a master's in music performance at Rice University. Um, and then um, after that, I uh, basically um, uh, just started doing covers of rock and pop music with a loop pedal. It'd probably have to be, um, again, it's not going to be, because of the classical background, it's not going to be like a specific artist um, that we know today. Um, but my favorite composer is Mahler. Yeah, so kind of a classical music nerd there, but I just, I love his, I love his stuff. 